Hello. Hey. I'm Sasha Mulholland from the Angelica Film Center in San Diego, and I want to welcome all of you to our new series called Coffee Club, in which we interview local film industry professionals and talk about our favorite subject, which is film, of course. So please hit that subscribe button for our YouTube channel to get all the information of our newest interviews. And you can watch Q&As that happened in our New York cinema um, from years past or even just recently before we temporarily closed. Um, you can also order food from the Angelica Film Center right now on Uber Eats so you can enjoy the Angelica Films experience at home. I'm coming to you from a virtual background of our movie theater in San Diego, and today our special guest is Beth Accomando. Thank you for joining me, Beth. Hey, thanks for having me. We are thrilled to talk to you. I got to tell you, I'm going to fangirl out for a second here. <laughs> I love listening to you on the radio. I oh, love you. it. I follow you on social media, and I, I want to be you when I grow up, Beth. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I love your interviews. So please tell us about yourself and your involvement with film. Sure. Um, my dad's responsible for who I am today. <laughs> he took me to movies ever since I was a little kid. And I think one of the like really important moments in my life was when I was in, I think it was elementary school, and he decided to keep me home because this is before streaming movies, before VHS. I'm old. And he wanted me to watch On the Waterfront. And it was playing at midnight on a midnight show. And he oh. felt it was an important enough film to keep me home from school the next day since I would have been up late. Oh, I could and, have been a contender. And I watch that, that movie. Film. And then he figured since I was already going to be staying home, I could also watch Tom Jones, the film with Albert Finney. And yeah. so I think in my brain, I felt like, well, if movies are important enough to skip school for, they must be important. And my dad was a teacher, so everything was always put in a context. So like when we watched On the Waterfront, he asked me about what I thought it meant and about how it connected to the House on American Activities Committee and how wow. Elia Kazan might have been filtering through, you know, his own thoughts and ideas about that. So to me, film was always this thing that you shared, that you talked about, that you put into a context. And so that was always uh, really important to me. So I think that's where the roots of my film criticism and obsession with movies came. Nice. And you are a local film critic with KPBS, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Like how people can follow you and sure. where they can get information? So I work at KPBS, so I do uh, film reviews and interviews which are for KPBS Radio and KPBS Evening Edition, but I have way more fun doing my KPBS Cinema Junkie podcast where, you know, I get to talk to people for as long as I want and on any topic I want. So um, I have a podcast. You can find all my stuff at kpbs.org slash cinema junkie, or you can also find me on Facebook. Um, I have a Cinema Junkie page, and I'm also on Instagram and Twitter as Cinebeth. Love it. Love it. Thank you. So tell us about some of your favorite memories of being in a movie theater. Sure. Well, you know, uh, one of my favorite memories is, involves my son and the Ken Cinema here in San Diego, which is a landmark and which we hope will reopen, just like we hope Angelica will be reopening soon. But um, I took him, I think he was about six years old, and I had never taken him to see a Marx Brothers film in the theater. And I believe we were watching, um, I think it was Duck Soup. But there's a scene where, as Groucho tends to do, he breaks the fourth wall and looks directly into the audience and starts to talk. And when he looked into the audience, my son tugged on my sleeve and said, Mom, I think he's talking to me. <laughs> And he was so, like, he really felt like he had made this connection with Groucho Marx. And I thought that was fabulous. I love that. And I also, you know, in terms of, like, being in a theater, I'm a horror fan. So That's right. sharing about a horror you. film with someone is really important because you can watch at home and maybe you'll get scared, maybe not. But part of the fun is 
the whole theater reacting. And I love sitting next to someone who's a jumper, who <laughs> screams at everything, because I'm jaded. I see, I've seen so many horror films, I know what to expect. But you know, you sit next to a jumper or a screamer and they, every scare is amplified because they're having so much fun. But um, I remember there was a documentary on cinematographers and they talked to the cinematographer who had worked with Roman Polanski on Rosemary's Baby. And there was a scene in which Ruth Gordon goes to answer a phone call and you're looking down a hallway and Polanski had set it up so that she goes in, sits on a bed and all you see is like her shoulder and leg while she's talking on the phone. Wow. And the cinematographer was like, this is all wrong. You know, we need to see her completely in the shot. We can't see her talking. And Polanski was adamant that this was the way the scene needed to be shot. And when the cinematographer went to the premiere, he was watching that scene. And as Ruth Gordon goes down the hall, enters the bedroom to answer the phone, everybody in the theater leaned to one side to peer around the door frame <laughs> to get a glimpse of her. And that was the point where the cinematographer was thinking like, ah, you know, I get it. And that feeling of being in a theater where you like lean to watch, to look at something and you suddenly realize, ah, I can't do that, but you notice everybody else or a number of people are doing it too. It's this shared communal experience, which I think is really important to what film is all about. Totally agree. So do you have a favorite movie theater snack? Uh, well, so I started doing film reviews when I was in college and I realized that if I ate food every time I went to a movie, I would turn into a blimp. So <laughs> I try not to eat too much in a theater, but a good piece of dark chocolate will never be turned down in a movie theater. <laughs> nice, nice. So how has this current situation affected you or perhaps KPBS at this time? Um, or maybe, you know, your regular program, you know, what you were expecting to program for the next couple of months, you know, ha what are you guys doing now? Well, for me personally, um, I also work with a group called Film Geek San Diego. We're a group of volunteers and we program stuff at Digital Gym Cinema and some other venues. So, you know, we have a monthly screening series and because as with other theaters, um, our venue of Digital Gym got shut down. Of course. We had to stop screening. And, you know, that's a really important thing for us because again it's important to show film in a theater with people put the film in a context and have an opportunity to talk about it because if it's something you've never seen or a genre you're not familiar with or you know if there's something about it you want to share that with someone and discuss it with somebody who maybe knows more about it or just throw out ideas about what you think so we've had to table that but, you know, we're a group of film geeks, literally, and we are not going to be kept from our movies. So in this pandemic sheltering at home, we have come up with like a zoom in theater, as we call it, kind of like yeah. a drive in theater yeah. where we share movies. Uh, just this past uh, Saturday, we watched The Outlaws, a South Korean film on Netflix. So we, you know, tuned into it and then a group of us tuned in on zoom and we watched it and were able to talk to each other about it and make jokes or you know insights or you know talk about other korean films that everybody should see if they haven't seen them yet so you know we're trying to find a way to recreate what we had while we don't have it and you know a lot of san diego film festivals are doing the same you know the right. San Diego Italian Film Festival, the San Diego Asian Film Festival, Jewish Film Festival, they're all trying to create some sort of place for online discussion and an online community. And so, you know, we're all hungry for keeping that communal feeling alive in some way. That's a great point. And also people are really turning to the arts at this time. I mean, I myself got to sit down and stream a ballet yesterday and that was, you know, remarkable. Uh, so, you know, it's interesting that, uh, that this is, I hope that this, you know, sort of inspires people to really care more about the arts because it, it's really helping them through this difficult time. Um, and so, you know, speaking of movie theaters specifically, 
you know, they've gone through a lot of ups and downs over the years. There have been many times where, you know, people thought, oh, it's going to be the end of movie theaters, right? I mean, there was TV and, you know, now there's streaming and there's always sort of something um, that perhaps people are thinking, oh, movie theaters, we don't need them or something like that. But they've really stood the test of time. And, you know, so I'm curious about why you think movie theaters are relevant in our lives and how we can keep them going in the future. Well, you know, a lot of live theaters have gone to streaming some of their performances, you know, um, online that they've videotaped a play or something. And I don't think anybody ever thinks, oh, we'll do away with live theater because we can just film the plays and put them online. But everyone knows that's a completely different experience. And in the same way, I think films are meant to be shown on a big screen and I think they're meant to be shared with other people and it is fun to you know be in a comedy where you hear people laughing and that kind of you know makes you know it's not that you need other laughter to make you realize a film is funny but you have this shared experience or especially like you know there's some films where there's layers to the joke like something like Airplane where it's silly or Shaun of the Dead where there's all these pop culture references. So like if you're in a big theater and somebody laughs at this joke, you suddenly feel this connection like, oh, they used to watch Simon Pegg in Space and they know that that's a character from the old Space show and other people weren't laughing and you get this little moment of going like, yeah, there's other people out there who are the same nerdery that I do. So, you know, I think, um, and you know, it's funny because I just did a podcast about uh, screwball comedies to watch and a huge fan. You know, screwball comedies were made during the depression mm -hmm. and it was an escape for people to go to the theater. Absolutely. And now we're having, you know, a similar trying time for people, but we don't have that escape of sharing, you know, with an audience the ability to watch a drama and go through, you know, these emotional upheavals or watch a comedy and share laughter or watch a horror film and share the jump scares. And, you know, I think being able to go to a theater during these times would make it easier. I mean, being with other people and kind of sharing experiences right. is something that's important. So I hope that cinemas come back um, as strong as before. Maybe they will find a slightly new way to present themselves. But, um, you know, I can't imagine a world where you can't go out to a movie theater with a group right? of people. <laughs> I can't either. Oh my gosh. Well, so what uh, what should people watch while they're at home? Is there something that you're like, they must be watching screwball comedies or something, you know, you can recommend? Screwball comedies are a great escape. They're <laughs> wonderful. Um, you know, they're fast, they're funny. There's, they are mostly battle of the sexes and they're very, I mean, the you know, a lot of people think back in the 30s, well, there was a lot of, you know, disparity between the sexes in terms of work and all. But when it comes to movies, those actresses were the stars and oh, yeah. they were the power. And so they have great parts. They're well written. They're not weak. They have, you know, a great battle uh, with their co-stars. So those are great. Um, you know, a show for me, like I mentioned, Spaced, which is Simon Pegg and Nick Frost and Edgar Wright, and they made this series before they did Shaun of the Dead or any of the other films. And it's just such a wonderful pop culture rich show that you can watch it repeatedly. And every time you watch, you'll notice one other like reference. And it's just a delight. And if you need pure escape, like that's a great thing to do. Um, you know, I'm also a huge zombie fan, so there's nothing like a zombie pandemic to, you know, make you think that maybe what we're going through isn't quite as bad. So, you know, there's two choices you have. You can either escape through, like, completely, you know, escapist fare, like screwball comedies or things like that, or you can, you know, tap into your stress and anxiety and watch films that deal with what you're going through and try to give you, you know, tools to cope with what you're you know going through now yeah i read a couple weeks ago that contagion was the most streamed movie of the month um so that was interesting but yeah i'm with you i think screwball comedies all the way all the way i mean it's great although i have seen some memes going around recently about people saying like 
hey, we have to go through all this and there are no zombies? No care. <laughs> you know, that's not what I signed up for. <laughs> well, you know, a zombie is a lot easier to spot coming at you than a microbe. <laughs> yes, true, <laughs> true. Great point. So did you have a favorite event or guest or interview from 2019? Well, you know, it's funny because uh, the TCM Film Festival is in April and I've been going for, I think it's been five years now. And, you know, I love classic movies because these are the movies that my dad grew up on and shared with me when I was a kid, you know, King Kong, the Marx Brothers, screwball comedies, film noir, gangster movies. So, you know, every year going to the TCM Film Festival in Hollywood was great. Uh, you know, there were people that I met online who I then got to meet in person and we all share a love for these movies. And, you know, that was, and it's movies, the, you know, the thing is when you go to a new movie, you never know if it's going to be good or bad. But sure. when you go to the TCM Classic Film Festival, they're all proven they're gems awesome. or they're discoveries of films that, you know, have been out of circulation for a while. So, I mean, it's just this celebration of great movies and every film you go to reminds you why you fell in love with movies and they present them so well. There are these two guys, it's Ben Burt and Craig Burton who present films and they like dive deep into like a special effect. Like how did they create the sound of the arrow in the adventures of Robin Hood? Oh, or how did they do the splitting of the Red Sea in the 10 commandments? And they go, really in depth into how these things were done and into trivia and behind the scenes stories. So like that whole experience of the TCM Film Festival is just like, I think my best movie going experience was at the TCM Film Festival a couple of years ago when they showed the silent film, The Passion of the Joan of Arc. And they had a live choir and a live orchestra. I remember that, yes. And we watched it from the balcony and it was like being in church. It felt transcendent, like you were being lifted up. And that experience was so amazing. And that cannot be replicated anywhere except in a movie theater. And sharing it, you know, seeing that people were like moved to tears by it and feeling that, you know, oh. goose pimply feeling of like something amazing happening. So I am really missing that this coming weekend, uh, the TCM Film Festival was to happen. They're doing a home edition because unlike a lot of festivals, TCM has a channel right. where they can put some content. Um, so they're going to be doing a home edition. But the TCM Film Festival is something that I always look forward to and will be having to experience in a slightly different manner this year. This year, yes, that's a great point. And that is actually my favorite film festival. So, and I've been the last five years, so I'm, I'm also really, it's like a hole in my heart a little bit not to be able to be there this year. Um, so what releases are you most looking forward to when we reopen? No time to die. I am a Bond fan since childhood. I was, I remember when I was five years old, I got the Goldfinger album. Oh, nice. I'm in love with the film. And I played it so many times that my parents hid it from me. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, I have been a devotee. I mean, you know, my favorite Bond is Sean Connery. My second favorite Bond is Daniel Craig. And uh, so I am really looking forward to seeing what they do and bring, how they're going to bring his reign as Bond to an end. An end. So were you shocked when they postponed the movie? No, I mean, I was actually kind of grateful because Bond in April seemed wrong. Bond always seems like, you know, it's a November release. It's in the fall. It's a little bit dark, you know, it's yeah. not in April. No, it wasn't right then anyway. So uh, I'm hoping theaters will be open in November and uh, we'll be going back to see James Bond one more time with Daniel Craig. So that's probably the thing I'm most looking forward to. Me too. And it's scheduled for Thanksgiving weekend. Um, so yes, fingers crossed that we'll all be back in time for that. And we can see Daniel Craig on the big screen. I would also love to see that film. Um, well, thank you so much, Beth. We really appreciate you talking to us on our coffee club today. Um, so again, for everybody watching at home, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and order some Uber Eats from the Angelica so you can experience the Angelica at home. Thanks so much. And we'll see you on the next episode of Coffee Club. Thank you. Mm hmm.